All right, now let's apply order of operations to fractions. Our first example here, we have 2 fifths times the quantity 5 minus 1 half minus 1. If we recall order of operations, we do with grouping symbols first, then exponents, then multiplication and division in a left to right manner, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. So the first thing I notice is there's grouping symbols, so I'm going to work within these parentheses. So within these parentheses, I say 5 minus 1 half, well, I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to write this as 10 halves. And I'll just write it right below. 10 divided by 2 is the same thing as 5. So now they have a common denominator. 10 minus 1, both over 2, would be 9 halves. So that was the first step. I worked within those grouping symbols. Now there's nothing within the grouping symbols that I can do. It's 9 halves. Now I can move on to the next operation. Well, in this case, it would be multiplication. So I can multiply these, and I say, hey, these two can reduce. 2 over 2 is 1. So I'm left with 9 fifths. But I still have to subtract that 1. It's our last operation. Now, 1's a nice number, because I can turn it into any value, uh, as long as it's still equal to 1. I want a denominator of 5. So I'm going to rewrite it as 5 fifths. Any number over itself is 1. So now I can do that subtraction. 9 minus 5 is 4 over 5, 4 fifths. All right, let's look at another example. Here we have 1 sixth plus 1 third to the third power plus 2 fifths times 3 fourths to the second power. Well, <clears throat> we have to work within grouping symbols first. That's what order of operation tells us. And we have two grouping symbols. So I'm going to work within this one and then that one just working left to right. So within this grouping symbol, 1 sixth plus 1 third, I have to multiply this by 2 over 2 to get that common denominator because it's addition. So this becomes 2 sixths. 2 sixths and 1 sixth is 3 sixths. And what do we notice about that? Well, maybe we notice that it reduces to 1 half. So I'm going to reduce it right now. This is 1 half. But this value in here, even though it's simplified to 1 half, it's still being raised to the third power. We have to do what's in those symbols before we can move on. All right, we have this one. So I'm going to do this multiplication because it's within that grouping symbol. And I see a 2 on top and a 4 on the bottom. So I'm just going to reduce. And now I can multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 times 2 is 10. This does not simplify. That value still has to be squared. And we do exponents before we do addition or subtraction. So let's move on to that next. We've dealt with the grouping symbols. There's nothing more I can do within those grouping symbols. So we move to exponents. Well, to the third power means I'm going to take this factor of 1 half and multiply it by 1 half so that I have three factors of 1 half. Well, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 again is 8. So I've assessed that exponent. Well, I still have this exponent, so I need to assess that. 3 tenths squared just means I need two factors of 3 tenths. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 10 times 10 is 100. Now, in order to add fractions, I have to have a common denominator. Well, I know 8 does not go into 100. 100 is not a multiple of 8. So I, maybe I want to factor it down. I know that this is uh, 25 times 4, and this is 4 times 2. I see that common factor of 4, so that's good news. That's part of my LCD. So I'll write it right here, LCD, 4 times. What are my unique factors? 25 and 2. So if I put these together, I'll have my LCD. And then I can change these and do that addition. 4 times 25 is 100, times 2 is 200. 200 is divisible by 100 and by 8. So that's my LCD. So what do I have to do to this 8 to make it 200? Well, I have to multiply it by two factors of 5, or 25. 
So I'm going to multiply it by 25, top and bottom. And I'm going to get 25 two hundredths. And I'll write it over here, 25 two hundredths. Plus, what do I have to do to make this 200? I have to multiply it by 2 over 2. That's my fancy form of 1. 9 times 2 is 18. And 2 times 100 is 200. Now they have a common denominator. I can add them. 25 and 18 is 43 two hundredths. And there are no common factors, so this is not going to reduce. That's our answer, 43 two hundredths. All right, one last example. We have 1 tenth plus 3 twentieths. And then in this parentheses, we have 1 fifth minus 1. And if we keep in mind parentheses adjacent to each other, tell us we need to multiply. So first, I have to have that common denominator. And I see that 20 is a multiple of 10. So I multiply it by 2. So I have 2 twentieths plus 3 twentieths would give me 5 twentieths. In here, I can simplify within this grouping symbol. And there's that value of 1 that I can write as 5 fifths, because I can write 1 to have any denominator. 1 minus 5. Well, they have different signs. I'm going to find their difference. Their difference is 4. But the larger value is negative. And now we've simplified that. Now we can do the multiplication by adjacent parentheses here. And since I'm doing multiplication, I can reduce. I see this 5 will reduce that 5. And 4 and 20 have a common factor, which is 4. So that makes this 5 and this 1. Now be careful. We have that negative sign, right? It's 1 times a negative 1. So we have a negative 1 in our numerator. And 5 times 1 is just 5. So we get a negative 1 fifth. Practice is the most important thing. That's how we develop our math skills. So keep practicing, doing the homework. Thank you for watching.